I'll take your point. Let's let's explore understanding. Mm -hmm. So you brought up the universe function and you brought up the causal relationships between all these entities in this universal model that we have created. But then if I work with understanding needs that universe function, that unified model, then it feels to me that most AI models or computation models won't fit the bill. Let's bring in a thought experiment. In 1980, John Searle published a paper, Minds, Brains and Programs, in which he proposed the Chinese room thought experiment, a Gidankin experiment, where he said that, imagine there's a room, I'm in the room, I don't speak Mandarin at all, but I have a set of instructions, a manual or a computer inside that helps me translate Mandarin into English. People outside the room don't know what's happening in the room. They slip me a question in Mandarin. I take it, translate it, find out what the question is, write my answer in English, translate it back, push it outside the room. To the people outside the room, the system appears intelligent, appears fluent in Mandarin. But I know what's happening inside. I can't speak a word of Mandarin. And John Searle said that this room is analogous to a computational model. It's only following a set of instructions. It's not actually intelligent. I guess the open question, let me, let me take your stance on this. Where do you think this thought experiment lies? Do you think there's a problem with the argument or do you agree with John Searle that these systems are intelligent, they're not intelligent. There's a difference between a system like this and a conscious intelligence system. I suspect you could say in a similar way that a computer can never play chess because when you look into the transistors, you will never see chess. You will only always see uh, electrical currents and Ones states and where the transistor is in and, uh, Right? There is no chess involved. And you find this problem well, well expressed by Leibniz when he talks about the mind being a mechanism, something like a mill. And now imagine you enlarge this mill so much that you can walk inside of the mechanism and look at it. And all what you see is parts pushing and pulling at each other. And you will never see a perception or a feeling. And this is the sentiment that Searle is expressing. And this is puzzling only because it is a category error. Because the class of events that you're looking at when you look at mental events are not the same class of events that you see when you're looking into the physical universe. Software and hardware are different types of objects. Um, hardware is basically doing things locally in a particular way. At least that's how we think about it. And uh, software is a, a generalized pattern that has causal power. And what we care about is this causal structure. And our psychological reality is playing out in this causal structure in the form of representations. It's a pattern within the pattern of reality. Stuff is not a thing, it's a law of sorts. It's a physical yes. law. It's, it's not, uh, it's, it's not thing-like, it's law-like. And okay. that might sound confusing at first, but what this, uh, when you look at a, a software object, it's sometimes used the metaphor of, say, a word processor. When you have uh, Microsoft Word running on your laptop and uh, Microsoft Word running, is running on a different laptop, based on the same source code, uh, it is meaningless to say this is the same object or it's a different object, right? It, you could say it's the same pattern. Right. And this pattern can be characterized as when you take a bunch of transistors and you put them into this in this state and uh, this in this arrangement, so they form a computer CPU, and they have this, this starting state, you will observe the following evolution of states, right? And we call this evolution of states word. And it's somewhat comparable to say when you arrange matter and this in this particular way, you will uh, observe gravity. It's, it's the same thing. Gravity happens everywhere, wherever you have matter uh, in the universe and um, several masses in the universe, uh, you will observe gravity. And gravity might be different on Mars than on Earth because you have different mass. In the same way, software might play out differently in different computer architectures and hardwares because they might have different speed and so on, but uh, you can translate them into each other. And so ultimately it, you will find this law-like structure wherever in the universe you can arrange transistors in a Turing machine. And so in this sense, it's a law. Software programmers are discovering extremely specific physical laws. The Chinese room is a thought experiment that uh, Searle hoped would show that computers cannot be intelligent. And it's, it, uh, Dennett calls it an intuition pump because it is giving people an idea why something must be wrong, but the intuition pump itself uh, might still be wrong. It just has to do with the fact that the intuition is not powerful enough to understand reality. A good example might be that Searle in another text describes that a computer um, is made out of um, logical units um, and you can, can take these logical units 
flip-flops, for instance, which are made of logical gates, arrangements of transistors that can hold state and yeah. change state in deterministic ways. You could, in principle, build them from uh, tubes holding water, or uh, you can build them from uh, mechanical relays, but you could even build them from cat, mice, and cheese. And uh, this shows how absurd this idea is that you could have a mind in cat my, uh, arrangement of cat, mice, and cheese. And so I try to make a rough calculation. Uh, uh, what is the capacity of the human brain? How many flip-flops would you need? How many uh, cats, mice, and cheese would you need to uh, build such a flip-flop? And then without thinking about uh, where to put the litter boxes and how to uh, get this thing to work in any way, just this volume, um, based on an estimate by Hans Moravec on the uh, capacity of the brain in terms of computation, I got uh, to an arrangement of cat, mice, and cheese that would roughly have the size of the moon. <laughs> and if you see a moon-like arrangement of uh, cat, mice, and cheese that is extremely intricate, maybe your intuition would change. You think, oh, maybe this thing can actually think, <laughs> right? And so uh, you should not trust these intuition pumps. And the one in the Chinese room is a very beautiful, elegant intuition pump that basically tells you that the mechanisms in physical reality are in a different class than the mechanism in psychological reality. Mm -hmm. Right, because you live only in psychological reality, not in physical reality. And once you realize this, you can understand that psychological reality can be the result of a physical reality that implements it and probably has to be. Right, Every psychological phenomenon has to be implemented by something that makes it real in physics. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, Minecraft in your computer is uh, being uh, implemented by something in the physical universe. And it's not identical to the thing in the physical universe. It's a pattern that exists across many different arrangements in physics that can implement the same computations. And so I think that this intuition pump is very beautiful, but it's possible to defeat it. And there's a large body of attempts to defeat the Chinese room. And so is aware of these and understands that many of these arguments are very good. And so there are many follow-up te texts where he is making much more intricate arguments and uh, that also imply that he knows that the Chinese room itself is wrong. It's the wrong metaphor. and It's mis highly misleading. But regardless of this, I've seen Searle standing in front of philosophy conferences and cognitive science conferences and repeating the one thing that made him famous. And I have difficulty with this. I feel that it has an enormous lack of integrity that expresses profound contempt for the audience. And so this is a thing where I'm not okay with Searle that he is not trying to make intellectual progress, that he's not understanding the ways in which he could be wrong, then updates accordingly, and then lets the audience know in which ways he is wrong, but he understands the incentives that he is under, which means he has to defend the brand. And the brand, unfortunately, is not built around the speech act theory that he made as an extension of Aya, which is probably his best work, but is boring. It doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Uh, instead, it's this famous meme that he created. 